You wanna transform your boring horizontal footage from this to this, or maybe you wanna take your basic 2D graphics and turn them into something a lot more engaging for your viewers like this. Regardless of what your heart desires, stick around to the end of this video because I've got a bunch of video hacks in Premiere Pro that are gonna take your edits to that next level. And as always, a special thanks to today's sponsor, Motion Elements. Video hack one. First on today's list, I'll show you how you can leverage generative fill in Photoshop to transform your horizontal clips into vertical clips in a few easy steps. So full disclosure, this technique works best with static footage filmed on a tripod, but there is a way to apply the same technique to non-static clips, which I'll show you as well later in this video. But for now, let me show you how we can use generative expand to take a horizontal clip and make it vertical. So with our clip in our timeline in Premiere Pro, we can export our very first frame as a TIFF file by clicking this camera icon right here. By default, it's gonna save that first frame as a TIFF file and we can locate it in our project bin, right click it and select reveal in Finder. Now right click that TIFF file and open it up in Photoshop. Now inside Photoshop, we can click our crop tool and then select the dimensions we want our new clip to be. So if we wanna create something vertical for socials, we can just set our dimensions to nine by 16 in this menu up here. Then just scale up our canvas with the crop tool until we can fit our horizontal clip in the center like so. Now just hit generative expand. Unless you have something specific you want AI to generate, then you don't even need to enter a prompt. Just hit generate and wait while Photoshop works its magic. Now just choose your favorite result before saving the Photoshop project as a PSD file. Now we can import that same PSD file we just saved into Premiere Pro and drop it into its own sequence. Then just copy and paste the original horizontal clip onto the track above our PSD file and make sure they're the same length. With our top clip selected, open up the opacity tab and using the pen tool, create a mask around our footage like so. And when you're done, make sure to feather it out in order to blend the two clips together. If we play it back, we pretty much have our effect, but let's take it a step further. We can nest the two clips together and then we can add a post zoom using keyframes like so to add a bit of movement. Or we can even add our favorite handheld camera preset to really bring the clip to life as well. Now, a couple more things to mention before moving on. If we wanna remove a specific object in a shot, we can do so using a super similar technique. So let's say we have this clip of a random neighborhood, but we want to remove this stop sign for whatever reason. Just export the first frame as a TIFF file, open it up in Photoshop, but this time, instead of selecting the crop tool, we'll grab the lasso tool and simply draw a rough circle around the area we wanna remove or change. Then just hit generate and let Photoshop work its magic. Save it as a PSD file and repeat the same process of importing it back into Premiere Pro. Now that we have our two clips, one on top of the other in Premiere, we can draw a mask around our stop sign and invert it. And voila, we've removed our stop sign. Now, finally, we can also use a similar workflow to achieve a similar effect, but with non-static or moving clips. We do, however, have to use After Effects for this technique, so bear with me, this will be quick. So I have this video of a photographer here shooting a landscape, but I wanna add a tall building in the distance using AI. With my clip of my Premiere Pro sequence in the playhead on the first frame, I'm gonna export that frame and save it as a TIFF file. From there, just open up the exported frame in Photoshop. Now I can use my lasso tool to decide where I want to add my generation. So I'll add a modern building and once I'm happy, I'm gonna save this as a PSD file. Next, I'm gonna open up my video footage and Photoshop file in an After Effects composition. Just make sure your Photoshop file is on the layer above your video footage in your comp. Now, mask around the AI generated building to reveal the video footage underneath. Now, with your video clip selected, go to your tracker tab and hit track motion. Next, make sure position and rotation are selected. Now take each one of your tracking points and put them over two separate high contrasted areas of your clip, preferably one on each side of your frame. Next hit analyze forward and let After Effects work its magic. Now create a new null object above all your other layers. Hit edit target and select the null object we just created and hit apply and apply it to X and Y dimensions. Now with the playhead at the start of our composition, we're gonna take the pick whip tool and parent it to our null object. Finally, if your AI generation goes behind your subject like this, just rotoscope out your subject and make sure it's above all the other layers and we'll have something that looks like this. Video hack two. One of the main things I see new editors doing that lowers the quality of their edits is not putting enough focus on their graphics. For example, would you rather a graphic look like this or would you rather it look like this? Now I'm gonna guess you'd rather the second option. So let me show you how we can use a simple video effect to achieve it. So with my video screen record in my timeline, I'll head to the effects panel and search for basic 3D to apply it to my media of choice. From there, we'll see three options, swivel, tilt, and distance to image. If we increase or decrease swivel, it'll rotate left or right like so. Tilt is gonna do the same, but this time it'll rotate along the horizontal axis 
like so. And finally, distance to image is just gonna move the image in or out towards the camera. So what I like to do is go to the start of the clip, set a keyframe for position up here, as well as for swivel, tilt, and distance to image. Now I'll go to the end of the clip and I'll readjust all my settings like so. So now we have a subtle 3D rotation effect with our graphic, making it a lot more dynamic to watch than the boring original graphic. Now, speaking of boring graphics, if you're looking for professional graphic templates and much more, then check this out. If you're a video editor or content creator, then head over to motionelements.com. They have over 700,000 royalty-free music options, safe for use on YouTube, and that's only the beginning. From stock footage to After Effects templates, they have you covered for pretty much all of your creative needs. They even have an AI script writer that can plan your next video based on a few simple text prompts. And the best part of all is they have free options as well as paid options, so no matter your budget, Motion Elements has you covered. Use code JustinSaran9 when purchasing your subscription for 70% off your first month when you sign up for an unlimited subscription plan. Video hack three. Last but definitely not least, if we have a poorly lit green screen like this, let me show you an easy way to make sure you get a quality key, regardless of how your footage looks. So we can start by creating a mask around our subject like so, and keyframing the mask to move with our subject over the duration of the clip. So we have something that looks like this. The ideal with the mask is to expose as little green as possible. Next, we'll open up our Lumetri color tab and head to our HSL secondary tab, use our color picker to select our green like so, and then use the color picker with the plus icon to select the additional shades of greens. So we have a great selection. From there, we can use these handles to fine tune our selection, making sure to select all the green we can. It helps to spend the most time here, really dialing in our green selection. Now, once we're happy there, we can scroll down to this correction wheel here and push all our greens to the same shade of green like this. Next, we'll decrease our contrast and sharpen settings so we can apply our ultra key effect to the clips as we typically would to remove a green screen. And now it should be just as simple as using our color picker to select our newly equalized shade of green, leaving a quality key in a few simple steps. Now, if you enjoyed this video today, make sure to check out the audio version where I show you 10 audio hacks in Premiere Pro that I think are gonna change your life. Also, if you found this useful, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.